So the first book that I'm reading is The Portrait of Dorian Gray. The book was published in 1890. The annotation system that I'm using, I've been kind of like figuring it out as I go, but I'm using pink washi tape for meaningful quotes slash philosophy, blue for character defining passages, this beige one for plot changing moment. I'd say like this book so far is really about morality and about beauty and aesthetics. It all revolves around Dorian Gray, which is the protagonist and of all the characters so far, it was the most likable for me at the beginning, but now it's starting to become more and more less likable. I haven't found a character that I like in this book. Henry is just not great. He's presented as this really dangerous, immoral person. Henry is just awful. He's able to talk his way of really immoral things and he just puts it, embellishes it, backflips and front flips in order to justify his values and his morals.
before we start the review, I'd love to take a moment to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for you to explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. You have classes about productivity, studying, memorizing, all in just one place. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes. Since today we're talking about books, I decided to recommend the class by Daniel Older, Storytelling 101. He demystifies the structure of a novel for the eyes of a newbie, which I found particularly interesting. The basics of world building, character, and conflict. At the time this is being posted, Skillshare is doing a special offer to provide new students with a one month free trial. So the first thousand people to click in the link in my description will get a full month of Skillshare Premium for free. Thank you so much again to Skillshare and for the support of every single viewer for making this possible. So I just went through a few of my reviews on these books. Let's chat about the books that I just read. I just want to say, no matter my ratings on any book, I appreciate every single author who went the trouble to write a coherent, a coherent novel. I believe that every single book is worth a read um, because everything is so subjective, right? Um, and that's the be that's the beauty of books when you are forced to formulate your own thoughts because otherwise you can't take anyone's word for it and a classic is a classic because a lot of people love it and a lot of people recognize it but that doesn't mean that you are going to like it you just have to find out for yourself you can read more in-depth reviews on my goodread because this is going to be all spoiler free on my goodread every time i mention the spoiler i just i write or i just put an option on it to hide it all the books in here i are very like reflective um most are like mysterious and i kind of just figure out that that's the more the kind of books that i read i created an account on the story graph because jack edward told me to <laughs> he made a video on it and I just, I was just very curious to learn my statistics and I figure out that I apparently read an overwhelming amount of dark, mysterious, uh, slow paced and kind of long books. But yeah, let's just start. The first book is A Picture of Dorian Gray by the very talented and very interesting Oscar Wilde. I wanted to put a cover to this book because it's not very pretty but I love the pages and I love um, how old it is and I love that I've annotated it so this book falls under the gothic classics and it was first published in 1890 this was for me a very obvious five star read it's a little less than 300 pages focuses on three main characters or basically just one main character and it transmits a lot there's not one sentence that doesn't have a meaning behind it there's no filler one of the best character studies that i've read is definitely for dorian gray except maybe for Jane Eyre. That's probably like my top favorite and then Dorian Gray from what I've read. You follow Dorian Gray throughout his life and you see his flaws, you see where he tries to fight them and then eventually he just like succumbs to them and all the consequences of, of his cruelty, him being haunted by the consequences, the moral consequences of his cruelty is all just moral. It's never like it's very interesting because pictures this painting that follows him from beginning to end and it's very very well written and well done. The ending of the book was very unsettling to me and I think it was really really clever but this book kind of left me wanting to read more, wanting to know more about Dorian, wanting to know more about the other characters but it definitely wasn't a book that I felt like it was too clever for me or that I couldn't understand certain parts. The author definitely brings you along for the symbolism. So this is a book that you'll understand when the author is trying to make a point. You'll kind of understand the symbolism behind the painting. I also recommend doing some research on the book. There are a ton of articles and websites that you can read more about the history of the book and the history of the author because it's just really interesting. Dorian Gray was based on a real life or it's it's thought of 
that it was based on a real life friend of Oscar Wilde um, named John Gray. They actually joked around and there was an inside joke. Oscar called John Dorian and there's like a special meaning behind it. So there's this alleged inspiration on a man that appeared to be a lot younger than he was um, and basically passed to be 15 years old when he was in his mid-twenties or something like that. So that was really interesting. There's like so much more behind that and this novel was not accepted. People back then were very judgmental and there were laws that dictated things that should not be dictated and people didn't like how masculinity was portrayed in this book. Oscar Wilde had to defend his book and say that there wasn't anything sexual about it and he knew that he couldn't write a open, openly gay book but he definitely left a lot of secrecy, a lot of disguise, a lot of codes and people just read in between the lines. This is a very easy to read classic and so people just read in between the lines and unfortunately that really turned his life around mixed with other charges he ended up being convicted of uh indecency i think and he was sentenced to two years of hard labor in prison and afterwards he ended up being uh just living in exile it's just horrible it's just, I'm, I'm so sorry oscar wilde so yeah this was a very interesting read um, I read it because viewers kept recommending it, recommending it to me and I definitely, definitely can see why. So next we have The Goldfinch. I actually happened to discover Kindle app and then I was searching books, really excited, and I wanted to read The Secret, Secret History by Donna Tartt, but it was still a little bit too expensive on the Kindle app and so I, I was like, well, if the author is good and um, the Goldfinch, it was on sale for like 3 euros, the whole book. It won the Pulitzer Prize and I was like, great, I'm going to have a great read. So 800 pages later, I was just not convinced. Um, this was published in 2013 and it's a fiction, a literary fiction, like very slow paced, uh, a sad kind of like mystery, not mystery, but like a uh, sad, mysterious book. You have Theo Decker, and he is a 13-year-old boy uh, who lives in New York, and he m miraculously survives a, a big accident that kills his mother. And this is not a spoiler because this is in just like the first, very few first few pages of the first chapter. The first chapter was okay, and the concept of the book was great too and i liked how it depicted uh, a certain like ptsd overall i thought that it lacked very deep deeply on character development you don't see theo grow at all or you don't see any character learn from one another I thought it was very thematically disjointed so um art is a topic but it just it appears in the very first few pages and in the very last few pages. Painting, which is a very big topic, is just very dissipated. thought that the resolution of the book was extremely anticlimactic. Characters have a ton of screen time. It feels like they never really make it to three dimensions. They just stay on the same course throughout the whole story so you know exactly how they will react to everything and nothing is new. I don't like to read something that's just like... In this case, I just really couldn't palette the conversations. I, th I thought that the conversations were really just not relevant enough. I did really appreciate some poetic passages in the book and I think Donna Tartt has like a really amazing writing skills and I just th d don't think that they showed in this particular book. Like, it just resolved on its own. Like, the characters didn't really have to do anything to resolve the conflict and... or learn anything from them. Also, this was a pretty sad book. It talks about some heavy subjects, topics, even though I think it's very tolerable. It definitely has some strong language. I wouldn't recommend this if you're in a rut or if you're looking for a happy book, this is definitely not it. I am looking forward to read The Secret Hi History and obviously give a second chance to the author. Talking a little bit about Kindle, the app, I really liked it. I thought that I wouldn't because it's digital. Nothing can top having a physical copy, but if you're on the budget and if you are kind of unsure if you're going to like the book or not, you don't have to have a Kindle. You can just download it on your phone 
on your tablet. So next I have Emma and I actually haven't finished Emma. Um, this is my third Jane Austen book. I read Persuasion and I read the iconic Pride and Prejudice which remains unmatched. This is another romantic classic. This was first published in December 1815. This is a lighthearted, slow-paced, chunky baby. I love how Jane Austen sets a book. I love how she sets a character. It's so well done. She's amazing. The theme is romantic misunderstandings, which is a very common theme for Jane Austen, but here it just amplified to a maximum because she was like, I'm gonna make a main character. This is so unlikable. Jane Austen said this herself. She's different from other heroines because she's rich, she's comfortable, she's very strong-headed. In the first few pages, this is not a spoiler, she's going to say, yeah, actually I am a matchmaker. These characters, compared to other Jane Austen books that I've read, are definitely not holding a grip as strong, but I could definitely say that about the first hundred pages of Wuthering Heights and that ended up having a really big impact on me. I am sad that I can't give a full review on this, but I'm still on the first few pages. I'm still in chapter 13. The last book that I read uh, here was Fido by Plato. And this is a classic classic. Plato is an ancient Greek philosopher if you don't know. So I don't know, I just, it felt weird to rate a book this like this, you know, so I didn't rate it. I read this because I am currently watching a philosoph philosophy course and this was one of the uh, just absolutely obligatory readings. It's kind of impossible for you to watch the course and truly understand without reading the book. The book actually starts here and this is just an introduction. I thought this was going to be so difficult because it's Plato, but actually it's just a conversation. It's just a dialogue, very easy reading. And this is said to be a pretty accurate description of what it was the conversation right before Socrates died. Now, if you know a little bit about philosophy, you might know who Socrates was. He's just a really big head figure of the ancient period on the Western of the Western philosophy. And the other figure was Plato, which is the author of this book and was actually one of his main students. So Socrates was Plato's teacher. And so this book is actually the last conversation of Socrates before he drank his poison because he was sentenced to death. Yes, another author who was convicted of something and, and this time he was convicted of moral corruption because he was just discussing a lot of political and philosophical things and just in the open with various people who passed by in the city. He was convicted and he was sentenced to die and he just, he was like, fine. He was just like, I accept it. And the reasons why he was so fine and he just accepted it completely are in this book. It's basically because he believed that he has a soul and the soul is immortal. And he explained his arguments for that in this book. Plato actually wasn't there because he was said to be sick and his other Socrates other students were there and he there they told the conversation that's why it's kind of said that this is a pretty good um, description of it because if it were if it weren't it would be so flagrant that like it just wouldn't be acceptable but it's not his word so it's kind of difficult to see where the character of Socrates starts and where the historical Socrates starts you know what I mean like it's, it's real or is it just Plato's words? Either way, Phaedo, it's just really a crucial document that I'm so grateful. And so it's really weird that this traveled so many centuries to my hands right now. Like this little, this girl from, from the year two, 2000 is reading this and, and they wrote this like so many years ago. And that's it. These books just happened to be the, the books that I was reading while I was filming this. Hope you enjoy this. Hope this video kind of gives you a little more motivation to read. I know um, it's kind of a slow thing. It can be kind of challenging if you're not into classics and you, you're trying out a classic, but even like any kind of read is good. I definitely wanted to read like more outside, but it just happened to be, it just happened anyways. I hope you enjoyed.